We all know that editing softwares are not cheap. I spend £684 a year on just Premiere Pro, which half the time wants me to fail, I swear to God. Surely there is a free alternative out there that has the same functionality, right? Well, there are literally dozens of options out there, ranging from the good to the bad to the downright ugly. But which of these are worth using? Well, who better to save you and me some precious COD points money than the inventor of editing? Me, Finzar. Yes, I invented editing and yes, I am in a deep and never ending pit of crippling debt. So how am I gonna do this? Today we'll be testing eight different free alternatives to Premiere Pro. I'm gonna be creating the exact same video with all of them. A video that's designed to test each software's ability to do animations, transitions, keyframes, text and audio design. So here's that video made with Premiere Pro exactly the way I like. Now let's remake that in our first free software, DaVinci Resolve. So we're gonna start with DaVinci Resolve, which does kind of feel like cheating because it's already such a polished program with great functionality. And yes, I have made presets for this, but we're not gonna be using those today because that really is cheating. We're gonna do everything from scratch. Let's begin. The first thing I did was download DaVinci from the Blackmagic website. Now you really gotta be careful here because there are so many other websites advertising DaVinci Resolve and I imagine that they're probably trying to scam you or just make you download their own software, which I totally don't yeah. fall victim to later in this video. <laughs> but it, but on the Filmora website, it says hit Film Express. So make sure that you download it from blackmagicdesign.com and then when you're in there, you sign a form and then it's downloading. In every single software, I'm gonna be recreating an animation, which I made in Premiere Pro in about two to five minutes. What do you think, Jack? Can I recreate that? Let's begin animation. I'm happy to report that keyframes in DaVinci are really easy to use. Using those little keyframe buttons up top, I managed to get a very simple movement done in seconds. Now, obviously I wanna change these keyframes so that they match the smoothness of the ones that I made in Premiere Pro. In DaVinci, it's as simple as clicking on this little keyframe icon and then going into the correct keyframe variable and changing it from there. Not a fan of how dark these lines are. I just can't see shit. Can you see shit? I can't see shit. Anyway, I changed the individual keyframes by pressing these buttons here. They create either a smooth keyframe or an adjustable one. And with a little bit of tweaking, I managed to make keyframes that look just as good as the ones from Premiere when you don't got transformed to do all the blurring for you. You do the blur yourself! These are the hands of a working man! That's right. Instead of automatically having blur, like in Premiere if you use the transform effect, in the free version of DaVinci, I'm gonna have to apply it myself using a separate effect called directional blur. I simply keyframe it so that it intensifies with the movement and so that it also follows the direction of where my character is going. I apply some smoothness to those keyframes and this is what it looks like. Oh, hell yeah. Making that transition in the background was really easy in DaVinci. Applying it was super simple and it has the motion blur included. A massive thumbs up from me. Now it's time for an adjustment layer in which we're gonna add a zoom. Now this is important because as an editor, I wanna be able to add zooms on top of everything rather than adding individual zooms on each layer. Unsurprisingly in DaVinci, this is possible. But, and this is a huge but, you have to go into nodes to use them. If any of you have seen my video on Flame, you'll know that I hate nodes. I hate using nodes. <sighs> so anyways, nodes aside, this zoom worked pretty well. And the next thing to do was the text. <laughs> Boing, 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 boing. To copy that text animation that I made on Premiere Pro, all I had to do was keyframe the scale in the text. Now, as you'd expect, this was really easy to do in DaVinci, and I had it looking pretty great within literally my first try. So I've just finished the DaVinci Resolve export. I think it was pretty easy. I mean, it's not quite Premiere, but it was easy enough. Let's see how this looks. Now onto the next software, HitFilm Express. I seemingly find this online very easily, download it, and start editing straight away. All right, we're downloading HitFilm Express. When all of a sudden, something doesn't quite feel right. And then I realize, it's just HitFilm Express. I fell for the oldest trick in the book. One, I'm in Filmora. Huh? Wondershare had used Google AdWords to have Filmora show up when you search for HitFilm Express, AKA false advertising, which I just fell for. I'm on Filmora 13. You mean, you downloaded Filmora, is that it? Filmora, got you. I'm using Filmora now. <laughs> it's free. I guess it's free. 
Generally speaking, Filmora is a very smooth software to use. I don't mind the UI. The UI is fine. Which, as a free software, is incredibly high praise. Filmora had some pretty basic animation presets, like a slide up, which I dragged on for the first slide, and then I used custom keyframing for the rest of it. The keyframes are done in a similar layout to Premiere Pro, except it isn't quite as easy to navigate. But what is easy to navigate to is the Transitions tab. Yes, there is a tab dedicated to transitions. Well, la, di, Da. So I go in there and I slap on a fast slide right. I'd say it looks pretty good, but it doesn't have the customization options to make it any smoother than it already is. So moving swiftly onto that all important zoom. Annoyingly, Filmora just doesn't have any adjustment layer capabilities. Okay, adjustment layers don't zoom, that's fine. So I'm gonna have to group those two clips together and then apply the zoom on that grouping, which once again with the keyframing is easy enough to do. This is what that looks like now. Moving on to the text, and there is absolutely no way that I'm not using their hilarious text presets. There is quite a bit of choice here, and they all look pretty cool, but I ended up going with this one right here. I added sound effects very quickly, really nothing to write home about, and then I was done. In order to export the project, I have to sign up to their services and all that stuff, which I guess at this point I should do, but I've made this whole thing without signing up to it, and I've still managed to make it. So I'm gonna go against the machine a little bit here. I'm just gonna record the screen of the whole thing and then crop into it and show you as the final piece, and that's it. If you wanna use this software, then you could probably have to sign up for that. You understand what I'm saying? Now I'm gonna use HitFilm Express, for real this time. And the whole thing starts off like a PowerPoint presentation. Welcome to HitFilm, where you can imagine, create, and share your videos. In the next few minutes, you'll learn everything you need to create your first video. You I'm a pro! I don't need no, no tutorials from HitFilm. I don't need your handouts! I invented editing! Whoa, there's a lot of stuff going on. First thing we should know about HitFilm Express is that you cannot drop a folder in there and have it be organized. Already a huge mm. thumbs down. Arrow keys move the whole clip. Redo is control and why? This is confusing as shit. HitFilm was a very different experience to all of the other editing softwares. It felt very much like its own thing that really requires you to learn it from scratch. Maybe I should have listened to that tutorial. But there were some cool effects and features that definitely aren't included on any of the other free softwares. Oh, particles and simulations, huh? Blood spray. Oh my God, look at that. Onto the keyframes, and they were pretty difficult to use, mainly because I just couldn't find where to do things. We can make a manual Bezier, but how? How do we change that though? How does one make a good keyframe on this? Once I'd figured out how to open keyframes, the rest was pretty easy and actually quite good to use. Whoa, motion blur, yes please, thank you. This was the kind of animation I got to make with it, and it had motion blur. A solid singular thumb up for that. Transitions were easy with a drag and drop slide, then I rendered the whole thing, brought it back into the project and added the zoom on top of that, because adjustment layers don't exist. And then finally I did the text, which looked awful, which is definitely the weak point of this software. This is what the final thing looked like. Now onto shortcut. Shortcut. Short, shortcut? Short. Shortcut, now onto shortcut. Whoa, look at that. Right there, the first thing that pops up, Filmora. Now this is the first open source software that I'm testing. And as soon as I open it, the layout is pretty simple. All right, all right, what the hell? I actually quite liked how the keyframes worked once I got used to them. The only thing that kind of sucked was the lack of adjustment layers or even nesting. So I had to do that zoom on each clip individually. But luckily, being the inventor of editing, I managed to make it look quite good. The transitions, however, sucked, but the animation generally worked out well. So I'm happy enough. Anyone who uses this to make full videos, like I respect. My shotgun uses shotcut, shotgun. My shotgun, I respect you shotgun, uses cut, gun. Shotgun, just switch to something else. Maybe DaVinci, the free one. So here's the final render from Shotcut. On to Lightworks, and Jesus Christ, let me tell you straight away, me and Lightworks uh... did not get on very well. This software immediately felt like a slap in the face compared to the last four softwares. Lightworks is more of a traditional software in the sense that it's similar to how people would edit with physical film. And that's why it's Thelma Shoemaker's editor of choice. Good for you, Thelma. You can keep this one. This software would definitely work better with a physical console to use, which is not helpful for this kind of editing, and especially not when you want it to be free. So anyways, 
I managed to get a pretty good looking animation, even without adjustment layers or motion blur. But the fact that it all took me over an hour to do is making me question my whole existence. So here's the final render from Lightworks. Now I always preach to you that it's really important to take breaks when you're editing. And I stand by that still. Reflect on your day and let your honest thoughts come out. I love editing so much. And now we're gonna move ceremoniously downstairs to use my laptop, on which we're gonna be editing on iMovie, CapCut, and Adobe Express Video Editor. All of these are free, and all of these are vastly different. First, we're gonna use iMovie. If you own an Apple product, then you have iMovie. Technically, it's free. I don't even feel like I need to introduce this. I think everyone here who's watching this has probably used iMovie at some point in their life. I haven't used iMovie ever, other than on iPhone, when you get those like trailers that you can make. Editing on iMovie properly is exactly what you'd expect. You can't really get much customization out of it, and you have to rely heavily on their presets. But something that is absolutely shocking to me and genuinely so surprising is that this has been the best UI and user experience out of all of the apps so far, including Premiere Pro. Everything's smooth, everything works, very easy to find everything. And there's little like cool little animations all over the place. It's so simple that it can afford to do this, but it's like, it's actually pretty cool. And I wish that there was like a professional software that had that kind of level of polish. Anyways, I had a lot of fun making what I could out of it. And this is the final render. Moving straight on into Adobe Express Video Editor. Now what is this? It's not Premiere, but it is Adobe, which should mean it's serviceable, right? Let's download it. I mean, we're not gonna download it. That's right, we're not downloading this. That's because this software runs through a URL. Here's something I've never really tried before. Editing a video on a purely web-based software. This felt about exactly how you'd imagine. Like editing a video in Google Slides or some sort of strange PowerPoint editor. Surprisingly, I managed to make a few interesting things happen. This would be great in a setting where you're working for a team of people and you need to slap something together real quick. It's basically iMovie, but online with all of the mess that comes with Adobe. There's a lot going for it, but it's also really like just not that great, so. But overall, this just came out like a corporate presentation that I do actually think would blow the socks off of any 50-year-old office bro in HR. And here's the final render. So finally, we have CapCut. Now, let's address the baby elephant that is indeed lurking in the corner of this room. I have been sponsored by CapCut before to use their mobile editor. On this video here, where me and Jack went to Oktoberfest and made a whole video using only iPhone and editing it on CapCut. It's a pretty cool video and you should go and check that out. Anyway, let's edit this video. But Having said this, I want to say now that I am under no obligation to be nice about the software, and this is definitely not sponsored. So keep that in mind. So CapCut is free. You can do this for free. You don't need to even make an account, but obviously the pro version's got a lot more stuff with it. Everything is just labeled with pro, 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 pro. And literally everything is locked. Keyframing was sweet in CapCut. I managed to make some really smooth animations that even though they didn't have motion blur, looked more than good enough. Keyframing. Looking pretty good on this. And with the transitions, the only real struggle I had was finding one amongst all of the pro transitions that you'd have to pay for. It's like searching for a needle in a haystack, and I wish that was easier to navigate. Text is the exact same story, but it does have some pretty cool presets available. I mean, CapCut's got some pretty good shit on it. You can tell that it's made for content creators. One bad point though is that you can't keyframe effects. So I can't keyframe something like the blur in the background to increase or decrease. All of these effects are just pre-done. I'm just supposed to drag and drop and that's it. No customization. I could definitely make a YouTube video using this desktop. Here we go. Well, that was a big journey. Lots of softwares that I am never gonna use ever again. And now I'm going home. Going home. But I've learned a lot today, mainly that I should be grateful for what Adobe Premiere Pro has to offer me, which is insane customization, easy user interface, and user experience and smooth overall workflow. I'd say the surprise hit in this was CapCut, the desktop app. Lots of surprising features, even for the free version. So quite like that. But DaVinci is obviously the powerhouse here. There's no denying it. It's the greatest free editing software available for any editors looking to just dip their toe in or anything. Just use DaVinci, that's my, my recommendation. You don't need the paid version to use my presets. So go to my website right here and go and find the, 
So go to my website right here. DaVinci Resolve presets are very available. They're all brand new and we're really proud of them. So go check them out. It's gonna help your editing journey a lot better than paying for DaVinci. You know what, I've done enough editing for a little while now. I'm gonna to have to take a big break, a real big break. I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here right now. I gotta, I gotta go, Jack, I, Jack, Jack, I gotta go. Okay. This isn't funny, like I, I'm going. Oh, you're gonna be okay. You can like run the channel for the week, right? Next week, right? Sure, okay, okay. Right. See ya. One, two, three, cuatro.